Okay, so before we go into Maya, let's make this model uh, be or our, on our floor. And as you can see, my floor is right there. It's really small. And I can make my floor bigger if I go in uh, into draw here. Go into draw and change the size of my floor. Please don't go away. It's seen grid size. Okay, let's make a big, a big floor right there so we can have something to work with. Now this model is tiny right now. Uh, we've been modeling it in ZBrush and ZBrush usually works with really tiny models. Now, I am going to make this model a lot bigger. So um, if I go into move and I press this here and I get a pizza. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I can now uh, move the whole thing in just one motion. So let's place it on the floor right there. And let's, let's see if we can make it huge. Can we make it huge without losing position of our elements? And there is a plugin. Okay, I'll just make it this. I'm just eyeballing it. There is a plugin uh, that will allow you to get the right measurement. I'm not going to go through it because I don't usually use it. Uh, but there is a plugin here uh, for measurements, which is called Scale Master. And you can scale this using Scale Master. I don't even know how to use this because I use Maya. But if you go and look for Ask ZBrush video in YouTube and you type down Scale Master, it's going to show you how you can uh, kind of like scale your stuff. So I'm just going to make it really big here and, and then I'll measure it up in Maya. Now let's look at uh, combining all these shapes. And remember, we're going to use poly paint so that we paint the vertex and we get the ID information inside of Substance Painter. So before I start merging all this stuff uh, together, and actually, um, I don't really need to merge everything. I'm just going to make uh, some separate pieces here. So if I go into draw and the base, okay. I'll make some separate pieces and before I make that I'm going to poly paint this like I was saying I was going to do by the different materials that I'm going to be using. So I know that the wheels are all plastic and there's a little bit of plastic right there and that's uh, metal and that's metal but that metal has a different color so those two pieces I'll get them together uh, I'll get them with the same color let's start poly painting this uh, before we go any further okay so this guy will have just one color and so let me just move this to the side so I can see my color palette here and I'm gonna use um, let's do red for metal and so that's gonna be metal so I'm just gonna go to color fill object Okay, now that is red. Well, what's our next object is the bottom bit. And that is metal, but it's going to be painted metal. So I'm not going to do that there. And actually, yeah, I'm going to go and now I'm using this bit here. So that's going to have the same color. So I'll fill that object as well. Now, these bottom bit uh, that bottom bit okay so here this is all one piece um, where is it this guy is all one piece but he's gonna have three different materials so I'm gonna use three different colors for this guy and just so that okay so the red I've been using for metal so this bit I want it to be red so I can I'm going to use so let me just go into polyframe here and this is my polyframe is this masked oh no it's the color because it's got red color let me just go into white color so 
So I'm going to use Control Shift to start getting some polygroups out of the way. And I'll use that technique to do that. So I know that Control Shift, not smooth. Okay. This guy. Okay. Okay, let's just make this one polygroup. And now... And now I'm going to make use of polygroups with my Z Modeler uh, tool. So if I go into my Z Modeler polygroup, and I can use polyloop here. Polyloop. And I think... Okay, if I press Alt... Uh, Alt... He doesn't like it. He's giving me a hard time. Right. And it might be because some of this stuff is hidden. Okay. So, yeah. That was hidden. And that's why. Okay. Uh, actually, it's probably easier if I just start polylooping these guys instead. Yes. Okay. So that that's gonna have one texture and uh, probably these guys as well. So this one, these one. The reason why I'm polygrouping is that I can hide and then just fill color these guys. So I'm just going to do some polygroups and uh, not to make this video too long, I'm just going to do these polygroups like I'm doing here and I'll be back in a second, I'll pause the video. So I got it to this point and I wanted to show you a cool trick and if you're not new to ZBrush you already know this. Uh, but if you are relatively new to ZBrush, I want to show you this symmetry trick, the radial symmetry. So I got five points, I can say five points. And now is it Y? It is Y. So I want to do these guys, but I don't want to do them separately. So I'm going to come up here and I got single poly selected at the moment. So if I press Alt and I start painting this, right? Oops, still painting. Okay, so this is the plastic bit. And I still need to get a color for the plastic. We know that red is the metal. Okay, so now because I have that symmetry, they all have that. So if I just click on one, okay. And apparently they have the same color as that center piece and that center piece is not the same thing. So if I click on one and press Alt, I can just uh, cycle through different colors and I'll use red for that polygroup. And this is just the polygroups. Let's turn radial symmetry off. This is just the polygroup so that now I can control shift and click these guys and I know that this is plastic and for plastic I'm gonna go with let's say green and I'll do a fill object for these guys and I'll turn uh, polyframe off so we can see the poly paint and now if I control shift click somewhere here <coughs> pardon and I click this other this other poly group please okay all right that one okay so now I have this separate and you you remember that we have this is the painted one and let's choose a very different color for the painted one I'll choose yellow for the painted one so fill object and now I can bring this back and this one is the one that is actually 
uh, metal like aluminium metal and that was red that we were using so fill object I'll turn polyframe off by pressing shift F and uh, this is the colors that we have um, we have in colorize I have these gradient colors turned on so if I turn that off it will actually give me the right colors and yeah that's pretty much it it's, oh yeah okay polyframe was on okay uh, that doesn't really look like yellow but because they're really different that's gonna work okay so I'm just gonna make sure that that painted one is really yeah make that disappear color that painted one let's do a blue for that painted one and say fill object okay and now the other painted one that we have if I look at the reference is the pole so if I go to my pole go color fill object and now my pole has the same color as that painted color on him now what other bits are the red bits let's go back to the red and the red bits are going to be this metal stuff so that's done that metal stuff up there I'm gonna leave it as metal as well and leave these as painted maybe so fill color even though we can't see the object there now the handle is going to be plastic just like the wheels and I haven't used plastic yet um, and this is a screw holder this is going to be metal as well so I might as well fill object for that and the holder is going to be plastic and for plastic we can use some other color here in the spectrum now let's use a purple fill object for the plastic holder and now we're going to go to the wheels and as you know the wheels are three separate objects that are all in one uh, sub tool so I'm gonna to have to split them up and it's all gonna be plastic as you can see the wheels are all plastic so I can I actually I don't have to split them up I can just go color fill object and that's gonna be my plastic so now if I come out of solo mode I have all those materials and oh yeah uh, that's plastic as well right so let's go back to that and control shift click that and color fill object actually I want that as plastic come back so that's plastic that's plastic that's gonna be that metal that is not painted this is gonna be the painted metal so let's do that again okay and that looks like it's a blue so I'm gonna make sure that I'll fill object with that blue there even though it looks like turquoise but it's the same color as that one okay and right and this guy what's up with this guy this guy should be that red as well and that should be metal so color go back to the red and fill object okay same thing for that screw I don't know why it became black I just uh... right okay okay so that's our ID map created now that we have the ID map and have all the colors for the different materials where we want them we can merge this guy so I'll just press UVs to keep my UVs if I want to use them uh, and I'll merge everything so I'll select the top one and just merge down merge down merge down merge down merge down merge down and everything is in just one uh, sub tool now 
now I'll take this into Maya and, and separate and make some proper UVs for it. I know this was supposed to be done in this video, but this video is so long. I'm just going to call this the um, creating the ID map video. And in the next video, we'll take it from here into Maya. Now, you can always later on break apart some of this stuff in order to animate in Unreal or Unity or wherever you're going to take this to. Uh, if you want to animate some of these parts, I probably won't be animating anything in here. Uh, this is going to be probably stationary in the game, but you would, if you wanted to have this move around, you probably wanted to animate the the wheels so you would separate the wheels and if you want to do some animation where the nurse comes in and adjusts this you would have to separate this as well so let's go into maya in the next video and i'll see you there